Congrats on Star Trek Discovery. Thank you. So what was your name again? I'm so sorry. Okay. Mary Chifo. And what do you do on uh, Star Trek Discovery? I play Lorel. That's what I thought. Yeah. But you look yeah. different because you're wearing yeah, yeah. that makeup. Yes. Congratulations on Star Trek Discovery. Thank you. Thank you. How fun is it to be on such an iconic series? It's it, it, fun is definitely the word. It's thrilling. I mean, it's intimidating. There's it's just it's it's everything. But it's it's a tremendous and exciting challenge that I think you know our whole ensemble feels really um, empowered to give it our all. When you were auditioning for it, did they say we're having you audition for Star Trek, or did they give you some random make it up name? It was. It, <laughs> it's, it's all so secretive. I mean, Ken Mitchell has a great story that. Also, he was auditioning for a Klingon, and, but they didn't say Klingon, and um, he was just behaving in a way that wasn't particularly Klingon. And then finally, they were like, you're playing a Klingon. You have to act like a Klingon. So, yeah, I mean, like, I think we all have our great story. But that is the, the um, incredible thing about um, this whole show is it is so top secret that you really, um, there's a lot of, lot of mystery until, until, you're there on the set. <laughs> now, before you started filming, did you watch any of the original or any of the old Star Trek series, and which ones did you watch? Um, for time purposes, I went through all the Klingon-centric episodes mm -hmm. just throughout. I knew I wanted to get through every iteration so I'd have a sense of each of those crews. Um, and, uh, yeah, I basically spent a lot of hours going through, because there's so many Klingon-centric episodes, uh, which is wonderful. I was very thrilled that I got to learn as much as I could, particularly through Worf and his relationship with the culture um, and really diving in in Deep Space Nine. Um, so that was kind of, you know, and I'd seen a lot of the movies before, both the reboot and the original, um, but great to come back to those. And um, and yeah, it's, it's really fun. And I keep, you know, I always like to find out what... Um, uh, are the favorites of other people's mm -hmm. and uh, and dive into those episodes. Yeah. What was one of your favorite episodes that you were in? Ooh, uh, I really loved every episode I was in um, <laughs> and the ones I wasn't in. Um, I keep talking about Despite Yourself, episode 10, directed by Jonathan Frakes, just because that was such a talk about, you know, meta experience of number one directing you. Um, and he was so great too. I, you know, it's not just the starstruck quality of oh, it's it's Jonathan Frakes directing. He is an amazing director. Mm -hmm. He has found a beautiful balance between the technical and the emotional, both in the camera angles and then how he deals with the actors. As he jokes, he's a rec recovering actor. Um, and uh, and then I was lucky enough to have such a complex scene um, at the at that point with my character. Um, I knew what I was playing, um, but it was being <laughs> misconstrued in a lot of different ways. So, um, But Jonathan was really, really great on set and really was sitting at the monitor going, go, go, go! And um, So when it came to just kind of a, a day on set where I kind of walked off feeling like, oh, that was, I really got to sink my teeth into something. Um, it, that was a special one. But I'm proud of all the episodes. Yeah. Now, on the season finale of Star Trek Discovery, it looks like we might be seeing you in season two. I actually have been sanctioned to confirm that I will be back in season two. Got <laughs> yeah, I got permission. I got permission. You said yeah. sanction. You were like, I'm not supposed to yeah, say yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm not supposed to and then say I was like, dictionary. No, 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 no. Dictionary.com. Sanctioned. Ah, no, it yes. has been. I, I'm allowed to say. You'll see more of Laurel. <laughs> Girl power taking over the Klingons. I got that what? detonator. And we ain't playing. <laughs> it is fun. They really, I, I, that, that angle is, I, I felt it in the moment. You know, sometimes you're acting it and the shot doesn't get it, but I, I am really proud of how they filmed that whole speech. I felt like it embodied how I felt as Laurel and as Mary. <laughs> You did a good job with that because it was like they were like, I'm not listening to you, some stupid woman. You're like, right, bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want me to listen? A, uh, oh, should I put my. I'm just gonna. I mean, no, no, I think we'll. We're gonna listen to me? <laughs> if only we all had a detonator. Oh my right? gosh, if only we had a detonator. <laughs> There's so many times I'm in a room, I'm like, yeah, I will. Uh, all the, my finger's really close. It's only. <laughs> You're my fine. DNA. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I was like, uh, is I know. Click on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, cool with her, but yeah, yeah. You, you Little. did a good job. <laughs> like really animated and fun. On the show, I'm like, I'm like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lorella is. I I tend to gravitate towards characters that are way cooler than me. Uh, it's the height helps, I guess. How hard was that to do though? Because you're in all that makeup. Yeah. 
and your character had secrets that you had to keep yeah. away from everyone else. That must have been really hard because I know you were like, I want to tell someone, I yeah, want to tell yeah, someone, yeah. can I tell, can I tell? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, exactly that. <laughs> um, I think at least, you know, it's like I could at least talk to Shazad about it. <laughs> as much as he, you know, when it comes to talking about things, I think I err on the side of talking and so I was like, yeah, 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 it's great. Um, but <laughs> um, I, I uh, your castmates, you know, the people that you can talk to about it are the ones that you can really, you know, um, trust. And, of course, the, the writers. And uh, I I mean, it's, it's tricky, though, because as an actor, you need to talk things out, or at least I do. I mean, some actors just keep it all in, and, but I process things through, through talking things out. So it's, it's, it's an interesting balance when things are so top secret. Now, when the show finally premiered on CBS All Access, did, were you at home in Studio City or Valley Village yeah. with your family watching it? Did they get to watch it first time live with you? Well, it was funny because, well, we had the um, official premiere um, in L.A. and we, we were able to be here for that um, at the Arclight, the Cinerana. Cinerama Doom. Um, but then when it did actually premiere on the network, um, we were actually back up in Toronto. So, um, but it was great because we got together uh, at a place nearby and like, you know, had a, had a room where we, we watched together everyone who was around. Um, so it was perfect and we're in the middle of finishing the season. I think we had just gotten the script for episode 15. Um, and here we are watching the beginning, which is actually kind of beautiful because you really... Well, I, I, I remember writing to Sonequa, we filmed, the first time I interacted with her was episode 15, and so we filmed the scene where she and Giorgio come to my cell, and the way she was talking to me, um, I then went back and watched the first episode, and I was like, oh my god, I can see this arc. Like, I can see Burnham coming into her own in this new way, just from the few lines that Burnham was saying to me in that one scene. So that was really cool to see how much uh, all the characters had grown even just from the first season. Yeah. Now is this your first series working with this many people? Because it's a, a huge cast. Yes, yes, absolutely. I am. Um, uh, well, it's funny. It's my first uh, series in, in, in general that I've been this um, immersed in and a part of. But I came out of um, school, I was at, a, at Juilliard, and so we, we were a very small conservatory, mm -hmm. and fun fact, Mary Wiseman, Cadet Tilly, and I were in the same class. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. So I will say that the feeling of being in an ensemble, our class was 17 people, it feels like that. It actually feels more like what I'm used to, plus all the technical stuff in the film, which I'm not used to, but when it comes to the core ensemble, which is led so beautifully by Sonequa, because she's such an incredible leader of light and love and really you know she game nights and dinners and like oh, wow. you know and she's working practically every day <laughs> and she has a kid and a husband oh, wow. um so <laughs> um it's it's really such a testament to her commitment to being a leader and keeping us all together so it feels like a theater ensemble <laughs> and final question so this is probably your first geek experience is your i assume you were at comic-con or is this your first WonderCon? i i me personally, I grew up, my, my best friend Eve is right over there. She doesn't see that I'm pointing at her, but we grew up going to Comic Con. She doesn't, I'm, pointing I'm pointing at you again. I'm pointing at her again. I'm zoned out. I'm not. I'm not. But um, so I, I have been a geek on that side. Uh, but yeah, Las Vegas last year, the North American Star Trek convention, that was my first big moment of like, oh, this franchise is really expansive and the fandom is huge and wonderful like you get a sense of that through the internet but it's not until you're walking those halls in person that you're like oh I'm really part of something <laughs> so I'm getting more and more used to it but this is my first WonderCon in any form have you seen anyone walking around in cosplay at any of the convention at uh, the Las Vegas con or WonderCon I you know uh you probably yeah. haven't got a chance to really walk around. I haven't walked at these halls, um, but I did see some great ones at Las Vegas. I actually got to judge the costume contest, which was so fun because I, I, my schedule worked out that I was able to stay for the full four days or whatever. So I got to see a lot of great, great costumes. That is so fun. Congratulations. Thank you. Hopefully one day I will be seeing you at ComCon again. I hope so. And then we'll talk about what's going on <laughs> on the show. <laughs> That's this always the hope, hope, right? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank and you. And wow, Juilliard, multi-talented. I, I just keep, keep churning, keep 
trying to do whatever I can to be of service and do my art. <laughs> so what are you going to do during your um, off season? I, I have um, some uh, a project that I'm currently producing that I can't talk about yet. So this is like the, the perpetual, but hopefully we'll, I, I think soon we'll be able to talk about it. But it has been fun. I've been on the other side. It's something I've adapted and something that I um, am producing. And it's been really amazing to kind of be on that side of things and realize all of the conversations that, you know, like all of these people that we're celebrating today have to have on a daily basis. I'm now being behind the scenes doing that. So it's been empowering, but also humbling and allows me to kind of take a breath as an actor too and realize, oh, there's so many other things going on right now. I just need to cool it. <laughs> that is so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. I adored you on the show. Thank you. 